think Earth's coming to an end? That is a certainty. It's just a question of when. If nothing else happens, the sun will expand and boil the oceans and kill all life on Earth. After three months of taking either placebo, 1,000 units, 2,000, or 4,000 units a day, the actual dose that African Americans probably need to reach the target recommended by the Institute of Medicine is approximately 1,600 units of vitamin D per day. And that's vastly different than the guidelines issued by the Institute of Medicine, which recommend only 600 units a day for adults up to age 70. In the New England area, in the wintertime, we don't get enough UVB radiation exposure from the sun to make any vitamin D in our skin. And so a lot of us are deficient in the wintertime uh, in the northeastern United States. In the six decades since the establishment of NASA, space exploration has led to several groundbreaking discoveries about our universe. The Space Agency has helped uncover many unknown facts about our world and possible events. From planets to galaxies at the edge of the unobservable universe. The most recent is the possibility of the Sun destroying our world. The Sun could destroy the Earth in 2025. It ain't gonna destroy the earth, but it's gonna be pissy hot. And a lot of people ain't gonna be able to survive that shit due to what you consume and the shit that, you know what I'm saying, been placed on this earth, so. Earth, there is so much to discover about the sun. Since 1958, NASA wanted to study the particles and fields around the sun, but was held back by the project's high cost. They finally got the opportunity to tick this goal off their bucket list when the solar probe mission was included in the 2009 U.S. fiscal budget, allowing the project to begin in early 2010. Initially named Solar Probe Plus, a $1.5 billion spacecraft was designed and built by the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. The laboratory completed the spacecraft in 2017 and renamed it Parker Solar Probe. Parker Solar Probe is the first NASA spacecraft named after a living person. What's more interesting is that the launch rocket of the spacecraft is in memory of APL engineer Andrew Dantzler, who had worked on the project. On the 12th of August 2018, Parker Solar Probe was launched into space to study the sun's outer corona. The spacecraft was designed to approach within six... Keep in mind what they just called it. The corona, right? 6.9 million kilometers from the sun's center and is the first to fly into the low solar corona. Having a launch mass of 685 kilograms and a dry mass of 555 kilograms, Parker is the closest ever artificial object to the sun and it is expected to undergo its mission for seven years. 1859. After Carrington became privy to Stewart's observations, he suspected a solar terrestrial connection. Further, reports of the 1859 event emerged worldwide, forcing American mathematician Elias Loomis to compile and publish them. The publication helped support the observations of Carrington and Stewart. So, one thing that made Carrington event hard to forget was the auroras people saw worldwide. Aurora, also known as polar light or northern lights, is a natural light display that is usually seen in high latitude regions around the Arctic and Antarctica. Auroras come in a pattern of lights whose appearance ranges from curtains, rays and spirals to flickers covering the sky. They are produced by disturbances in the magnetosphere caused by the solar wind. The Earth is not the only planetary body where aurora occurs, as most planets and some natural satellites also host aurora. In most cases, auroras occur in a band called the auroral zone, which is typically between 3 degree to 6 degree wide in latitude and between 10 degree and 20 degree longitudes. The word hour comes from Horus, which is the Greek name for Heru. Heru became Horus, became the hour. Even in Swati we say Lihora, because when you say what hour is it, you're basically asking where is Horus positioned in the sky at this very moment. Horus or Heru is the sun god or the son of God. That's where the son of God narrative comes from. That's where the story of Jesus comes from, Yeshua. Yeah, yeah, the sun god or the son of God because the cycle of the year is the cycle of the sun god Yeshua or the son of God and in Egyptian philosophy he had different names at different stages of his cycle. The cycle of the sun dictates the stage of life on earth. In the winter we're the most vulnerable and in the summer we're the most abundant physically and spiritually. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and share.